Venezuela, Juan Guelbo. <laughs> you remember when you were a kid and you used to go to the circus and you you like you look up at the at the guy on the high wire and he's doing this he's doing this he's doing his walk he's walking across the high wire and he's he's bobbling and he fake does a head fake and ooh, he almost falls you know and you watch and you watch because. Because it's just, you don't want to miss if he's going to fall. You don't want to miss it. Huh? So, you know, Marcus Conti reporting. That's kind of my take on Venezuela. Why do I keep talking about Venezuela? Because as I said, it's the cosmic mirror. The Venez what our behavior in Venezuela is kind of a mirror image of the way, not only that we treat our allies and, and people around the world, other countries, but also the poorest of the poor in this country, and uh, how we treat each other from the from the top down. I'm not talking about from the bottom up. Right now, from the top down, corporations leading the charge. And Venezuela is a great example of it because they have something that we want, which is oil, and they have an untapped market, which is very appealing to corporations. Right? That that overrides any humanitarian issue. Any it overrides everything. Money. Right. So, so Venezuela. Right. The idea was to prop up a puppet president. His name is what? Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo, the puppet president in Venezuela, the CIA plant, the guy who went to George Washington University in D.C. and was trained in the arts of CIA espionage. Right? who is now a traitor in his own country, who's calling for foreign military intervention in his own land, is hiding in a, in a foreign uh, embassy in, in Caracas, in Venezuela, because he can't come out. If he puts his head out, he's, gonna get, he's, he's likely to get capped somehow. Right? So that's, a, that's the, the, the story here. Right now, Juan Guardo is impotent. He's, he's failed. His coups have failed. His, his ability to rally the military forces against the duly elected Maduro uh, are failing. They're failing miserably, right? So he's a target now, right? He's probably worth more dead than alive. So let's look at that, let's look at that issue right here. So anti-war vo voices on both sides warn of coming CIA provocation to kill Guardo and blame Maduro. Right? That makes perfect sense right? because he's impotent. Right? Let's just read. Because, first of all, if Guardo gets whacked, right? You remember when Pompeo and John Bolton and Elliot Abrams, <clears throat> Elliot Abrams, Elliot Abrams, by the way, has been very, very quiet because they probably pulled him off of the cameras because he's, a, he, he's, he's the gaff king. Right? He's a, a war criminal, but he's also the gaff king, so he's been very quiet. But Pompeo and Pence and Bolton have been very vocal in, if anything happens to Juan Guardo, if anything happens to Juan Guardo, there's going to be, there's going to be aggressive action, right? And military options, on, we're not taking anything off the table. Military option is on the table. We have our military option on the table. Right? So if you take out Juan Guardo, and then blame Maduro, wow, you got a winner, right? You got a winner, right? So now you get your reason. You've manufactured your consent to go in there and 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 wreck the country and start a civil war, start another Grenada or one of or Syria or uh, Libya. These war, uh, prominent American anti-war figures from across the ideological spectrum are warning that the Trump administration may soon turn on Juan Guaido. The man they recognize as Ven Venezuela's interim president in order to justify military intervention in Venezuela. Well, look at Ron Paul, what Ron Paul says. He's been very uh, vocal and forward, Mr. Mr. Paul. These warnings followed Juan Guardo's failed attempt to lead a military uprising on Tuesday, which analysts characterize as a desperate move. With Guardo parallel, Guardo's parallel government having failed to gain any significant, tr significant traction in Venezuela since late January. With Guardo now quickly losing legitimacy and momentum since Tuesday's failed coup, it has become increasingly probable 
that his political patrons, the United States, may soon turn on him as any harm to him could be blamed on Venezuela's presidential president, Nicolas Maduro, which would allow U.S. government to justify aggressive action against Maduro-led regime. Um, there's, here's, here's somebody from uh, Ron Paul's uh, uh, field, Ron Paul's corner. What's his name? I don't know what his name is. doesn't matter. But listen to what he said. Um, over here. Uh, McAdams. I don't know who he is. Uh, Guardo has been a kind of hapless figure so far. He calls for mass protests and no one shows up. I, I don't think he realizes right now that he is actually worth more dead than alive, not only to the CIA, but also to his opposition people. A shot in the crowd or something like that could take Guardo out. It might shock you, Dr. Paul, but the CIA is pretty good at this kind of thing. Oh, shit. They're planning to hit. Right? Is that true? Let's listen to Ron Paul sum up. All right, so, so what do we know about, about, about Venezuela? We know that the, the, um, there's a military coup, that they do have free and fair elections, that Maduro is the duly elected president of the country. They have some issues of poverty. They have some issues not unlike any other, you know, South American country or any other. Okay, right here in this country, we have the same issue where 90% of the people are living in abject poverty and there's 10% of the people living high on the hog. And so they have that issue. We already proved that the, that the, um, that the elections are, in fact, fair. All right, so there's a, a, lot of, a lot of the lies coming out of Washington is what, what we're saying, right? That there is no oppression. There is no dictatorship. There is no brutal, brutal massacring of the people. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There's actually a, a sense of uh, rec reciprocity amongst the government to the poorest of the poor through what started in the Chavez era. So let's listen to um, Ron Paul sum it up. He doesn't talk anything about, you know, any of the political socialism or any of that stuff because it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that we're in there trying to steal the oil to talk today uh, about Venezuela, yeah. which we have done Big before, story. but there's some breaking news right now, which shouldn't surprise anybody because it's an ongoing uh, event there, you know, it's been going on for a long time. In some ways, our interference in Central and South America has been going on for a long, long time. Yeah. But this is more of the same. It's been updated right now because it's on uh, dealing with Venezuela, and they just happen to have the second amount of oil in the ground, and so it's a very important country. And evidently, the Russians and the Chinese, uh, they've saved a little money in their military budget, and they've invested down there, and that annoys the Americans. Cause He's hitting all the right points, right, that the Chinese and the Russians have been investing in, in, in Venezuela for a long time. They have significant investments, especially the Chinese, right? Because the U.S. has been, you know, it, it's ours, it's ours, right? The, the arrogance, the pompous arrogance of ignoring, right, sanctioning. We keep spending money on, on the military, and we forgot about how uh, free enterprise might invest in countries like this. But a anyway, the, uh, the story last night was that uh, Guaido, uh, you, you know, it virtually declared war, you know, yeah. come out yeah. and, and this is it and this overthrow the. This is um, a few days ago. This is about six days ago that he that uh, Ron Paul did this. But it's interesting background. So he hits all the right points. Government and uh, and immediately, you know, I say we support them, we support them, which we've known for all along. They've been so they created them, you know. Yeah. So and then the the usual suspects, uh, the uh, the Rubios and uh, Bolton and uh, Pompeo. Guess what? Uh, they're all gun ho over this, uh, but they're not for war. What they're for is uh, to uh, restore democracy <laughs> and constitutional law <laughs> to Venezuela. <laughs> and uh, here's a bunch of clowns. That's too strong. Uh -huh. There's a bunch of clowns. They don't have the vaguest notion about what the constitutional law in our country would be like. Yeah. And they're going to spread it and restore the constitutional law of these other countries. It's just, just cliches and, and, and nonsense. And uh, fortunately, more people are beginning to realize that uh, you're not supposed to believe these people. The, uh, 
the, the uh, uh, Pompeo, you know, recently announced <laughs> we lie and we, that's, that's part of our job, yeah. cheating and stealing and doing all these things. So, but anyway. It's amazing, right? He's hitting every point. I, fucking guy, I love this guy. Anyway, then that's what they've tried now. There's been a lot of uh, sanctions put on, on Venezuela. They have enough problems of their own with um, an inefficient government that's led to a lot of problems. But they, uh, they, uh, they, they, it has been made worse by sanctions, yeah. you, you know, hurt, hurting the people. And uh, this generally is the case, which we will never admit, that the sanctions, oh yeah, uh, we, we got to get rid of that leader. And if we hurt the people, they're going to overthrow their government. I don't know. The, right? The logic there is the sanctions hurt the people, and then the people overthrow the government. That's the idea. That's economic warfare. That's like, uh, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's actually, it should be a war crime, right? Where we won't, we, we're gonna we're gonna choke you, cause the people to kill your leader or get you out, right? The elected president, right? It's really sad. It's really it's he's hitting all the points. No, if it's ever were, it no. solidifies the support and probably pushes us one step or step closer to a military confrontation. And right now there's some pretty strong language. I would say it's the strongest we've had with these two factions right now of coming close to some uh, some military confrontation, which may d develop rather quickly now, today, next day or, or whatever, because uh, uh, this is exactly what they're talking about. You know, this is it. Uh, Guaido and the United States declared He's the president. Yeah. So who should object to this? So, uh, this, so the confrontation is moving along, and I think, uh, I, I think, in a way, Guaido uh, is um, is going to have to prove himself, or he'll be totally inefficient. Maybe the United States is thinking that too, because they've talked about this for a long time. And I, my guess is, they probably thought that they would have gotten rid of Maduro a long time ago. I think they misassessed. Uh, the people in Venezuela, and also that there's more support there than they realize. So that was a good overview, right? And it, it kind of reinforces the fact that uh, that Maduro, that uh, Juan Guaido is a, a impotent figure right now, and probably it it uh, validates the fact that get, just get rid of him, get rid of him, and uh, and then you know, oh, and then they create chaos because that's what that's what the U.S. wants to do. That's what the CIA does, right? Uh, so. So is it, has it been deadly? Yeah. Yeah. Venezuela holds vigil for those killed in street clashes. So they got six bodies already, five bodies under their belt. Led by Roman Catholic priests in white robes, several hundred Venezuelans said prayers Sunday at a candlelight vigil for five people killed in the street clashes following uh, opposition call for military uprising. So congratulations, Pompeo, Trump, Pence, uh, Bob, uh, Elliot Abrams. Congratulations, guy. You got you killed five people already. Right? That's what you wanted? Freedom? Democracy? That's what this is? Here's another one. Venezuela is now siding with... Uh, you, you guys created this war. You, you guys are going to create a war. Russia's coming in to protect their ally, protect their investment, right? Is, is, is doing the humanitarian thing, watching an imperialist nation in the United States overthrow a, a very small... Uh, nation in South uh, South America and trying to steal their oil. Russia's watching, China's watching, the whole world is watching. Everybody's watching, even the people that recognize Guardo are watching because they're afraid of the they're afraid of the U.S. imperialism coming at them next. Right? It's fear. It's brutal. Right? So Moscow. This guy's been all over the place. I, I've heard him speak. Speaks perfect English. And um, he's the foreign minister, says the country may expand the presence of Russian military specialists there, as Moscow and Washington accuse each other of interfering in the country's crises. Uh, foreign minister spoke to Moscow on Monday, a day after meetings, uh, meeting Russia's top diplomat, Sergei Lavo, who is to meet U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo later in the day. Later today, that's going to happen. Right. And both have accused, the Russians have accused the Americans of being belligerent and stupid and greedy and overtly, you know, grabbing, grabbing the, uh, grabbing the Venezuelan resources. So what is, let's just watch Pompeo again. This is, this is what, see now, again, 
the more the more you know, the more educated you become, and the more you hear sane, truthful voices, you then look at something like this and you say, "It's so unbelievable." Watch Pompeo again. We I think I already played this. We'll play it again. It's another minute. Watch. People of Venezuela, the United States sees your courage in action. We see you proudly reclaiming the freedom and democracy that is rightfully yours. We admire you. We stand with you. Last month, I visited Cucuta, Colombia, and saw firsthand the misery that Maduro has created with the Russians and Cubans' help. These same scenes of desperation are playing out all across Venezuela. They must end. When I was a psychic, uh, a psychic reader in the nightclubs, right, I used to, I used to sit and watch people talk, right? and you could tell when people are lying, when people are truthful, when people are sincere. When I look at Pompeo, he's just a, he's just a practiced liar. You could see it in his eyes. He doesn't believe any of it. It's scripted, right? When you watch when you watch Pompeo read the script, and then you watch Pence read the script, they're they're almost identical in their in their narrative, in their conclusions, in their um, you know they're they're sticking to their their Trump. Look, Trump is a salesman. Trump is a real estate salesman stick to the program stay on message that's what salesmen do they they give you it's it's bullet benefit close the bullet is is uh is you know we got to get venezuela we got to help our allies the benefit is that when they prosper will will prosper and then you close out the deal right by i don't know whatever in this case it's it's um by any means, you know, everything is on the table. But again, Pompeo, practiced liar. It's just, it's just, you could see it in his face. The time for transition is now. No more starvation. No more children without medicine. No more repression. The United States stands firmly with you in your quest. We call on all members of the international community to do the same. Your bravery and your voices will put Venezuela on the path to liberty and prosperity. You can hold your institutions, your military, and their leaders to the highest standards and demand a return to democracy. You can restore an inclusive and constitutional government. You can create the future, indeed a bright future, for yourselves, for your children, and for Venezuela. Uh, I mean, it's staggering, the, the lies, the, the constitution, restore a constitutional government. They already have a constitutional government. That's what Venezuela is. It's a con they have a, a constitution. They had elections. They they have a president that that you know won in a landslide. I, I mean, it's just it's just it's just ongoing. So so back to the the original uh, theme of this article, this video is: Are they gonna is is Juan Guaido gonna get whacked? Well, I don't know. I think I think it's it's possible. I I don't I think that. Even if, even if, like, okay, so if the CIA doesn't whack them, they have interest in whacking them. And uh, certainly, certainly Maduro, why not the Maduro regime? So I, I think it's, it's possibly, it's definitely something to watch for, right? Again, it's like the High Wire Act, right? It's the, it's the man on the flying trapeze. You look up, not because it's so interesting, but you don't want to see him, you don't want to miss it when he falls. Marcus Conti reporting, kindly become a Patreon of this self-funded, self, self-regulated uh, self channel. Uh, we've, so, again, over, we've been demonetized for, I don't know, months now. And uh, this is how we pay, you know, make the thing, this is the way, the way we make the thing happen by uh, <clears throat> your contributions. And also, don't forget to subscribe, even if you think you are subscribed, because YouTube is... Uh, is cutting people off, unsubscribing you. Marcus Conti reporting.